Hola mis amigotes, bienvenidos a Easy Peace Spanish with Angie. Today you are going to learn 15 facts about the Spanish language. They are very interesting and you probably didn't know these things, but today you are going to find out. Yes, yes, even if you don't believe it, you can read in Spanish even if you don't know the language. Puedes leer en español sin saber el idioma. Yes. Yes. Contrary to English, Spanish is a phonetic language. If you learn how the letters of the Spanish alphabet sound, you can read everything. I have a very interesting video, this one, and I'm going to leave the link in the description box for you, where I'm teaching you the sounds of the Spanish letters in the alphabet. It's very easy, very entertaining, and I promise that once you see that video and you learn what is in the video, you will be able to read in no time. Yes, I have said this to many people and they don't believe me and I always have to explain. But yes, Spanish is the second most spoken language in the whole world. How cool is that? There are 21 Spanish-speaking countries and more than 500 million native Spanish speakers. And you know what? There are more than 75 million people in the world learning Spanish as a second language. Would you like to be part of this list? This academy invented the use of the inverted question mark and exclamation mark at the beginning of a sentence. Something like this. Por ejemplo, for example, ¿Cómo te llamas? ¿Cómo te llamas? Can you see the inverted question mark? Yes, in Spanish we have two. One in the beginning, which is inverted, and the usual one at the end. Now, we do exactly the same with exclamation mark. Por ejemplo, ¡Qué bonito está el día! ¡Qué bonito está el día! Exclamation mark in Spanish is signo de admiración. Signo de admiración. Question mark. Signo de interrogación. Signo de interrogación. Yes, yes, I know. What a headache. <laughs> Many people ask. So, do I need to learn Spanish from Latin America or from Spain? Or should I learn Spanish from Mexico, from the Dominican Republic? I don't know. The good news is that we can all understand each other. However, there are some certain words that will vary from one country to the other. And sometimes you would have to explain, but that's not a problem. You can still have a conversation. And that happens in every single country. So this is not an issue. It's not a problem for you to learn Spanish. So don't have that headache because there's no need for it. Sí, el español está influenciado por otros idiomas. Spanish has been influenced by Arabs when they invaded Spain, but also from the English language, which we call Anglicismo. Anglicismo. This is, for example, when you say, for example, by or um, link, dame tu link, Words like this. And it has been also influenced by Latin. Sí, sí. Hay palabras en español que tú conoces y no lo sabes. What? We call this cognates. And cognates are words with the same root or origin. So we, so we have English, Spanish cognates. For example, flexible. Flexible. Flexible, flexible, circular, circular, circular. 
Yes, I know. This is tricky. And you have to memorize them. There's no other way around. Because there are some Spanish words that you won't be able to translate. Let me give you an example from the Dominican Republic. Le saqué los pies. Le saqué los pies. If you translate this literally, it means I took his foot out, which doesn't make any sense. But what it means is that you don't want to carry on having a friendship with that person. So you um, are trying to maintain distance from that person. I can't translate that in English. I'm sorry. You have to memorize it. <laughs> Next. You, the word you can be formal or informal in Spanish. In English, you would say you to a senior person, um, to a child and to anyone. In Spanish, that's not the case. So you better learn this. <laughs> so if you're going to speak to someone who is a friend or uh, someone that is very close to you or maybe the same age, you could say tú. Tú. Por ejemplo, tú eres mi mejor amigo. Tú eres mi mejor amigo. Usted es mi jefe. Usted es mi jefe. You are my boss. Next, <laughs> the letter H is sh silent, sh silent in Spanish. We don't pronounce the letter H when it's at the beginning of the word. For example, hola, por ejemplo, hola, um, helado, hilo. So don't say hola, helado, hilo. No. Just in the beginning of the word, the H is sh, silent. Next, el tercer idioma más usado en el internet es el español. So if you learn Spanish, you will have an advantage. It doesn't matter which method you use to communicate yourself with someone else. So you better learn Spanish. <laughs> and there are more than 256.8 million users on the internet using the Spanish language. El idioma español. Próximo. Ooh, this one. It's very interesting and you have to be very careful. There are some words in Spanish that they can be very similar, but the meaning is completely different. So watch out. And these are called false cognates. For example, por ejemplo, disgusto. If you see this word, what would you think it means? Let's see, have a guess. Mm, how does it look like? Mm, well, this word means annoyance. Annoyance. But you probably thought about disgust. Disgust. Which is completely different in Spanish. If you want to say that something is disgusting, you would say, que asco. So you see, Latin America, where I come from, has the most number of Spanish speakers. And this is the Spanish that you are going to learn here. Español de Latino America. Un español hermoso, neutral. Y también puedes aprender algunas palabras dominicanas. ¿Cómo se dice? How do I say? Español o castellano? <laughs> well, in Latin America, Spanish is simply called Español because the Spanish was brought by Spanish colonizers. In Spain, you will likely hear Castellano, which refers the Castile province in Spain. 
where the language is said to have originated. But if you say Espanol o Castellano, todo el mundo va a entender. People will understand you, so don't worry about that. And last but not least, por favor, por favor, por favor, no digas pina colada. Don't say pina colada. No. <laughs> no. I always listen many English speakers saying pina colada to this fruit, pineapple, piña. And the only reason why English speakers say piña is because in English, obviously, you don't have the letter ñ. So that's why people tend to say piña. But if you are learning Spanish, you can't make that mistake. You now know how to say it. Piña, piña, piña colada. And, and this is the end of our video. I hope you have learned new things. Please let me know right in the comments what did you learn today? What did you know? What you didn't know? And if you know something else or something that is probably curious to you, please write it in the comments and we can all learn something new because we can learn from each other. I'll see you next time. Remember to subscribe if you haven't yet. Share this video so other people can learn Spanish. And don't forget to give me a like if you really enjoyed this video. Thumbs up, me gusta. Nos vemos en una próxima. Adiós amigos.